One of the most important theories and ideologies in ancient China was Confucianism. Scholars assert that Confucianism actually established the groundwork for a large portion of Chinese culture. Confucius, a Latinized version of the Mandarin Chinese title Kung Fu Tzu, or Master Kong, established Confucianism. It should be emphasized, though, that Confucius had no intention of creating a new religion. Scholars claim that Confucius intended to explain and revitalize the Zhou dynasty's nameless religion, which led many people to believe that the antiquated system of religious control was insolvent. Don't forget to subscribe to Ancient History for fascinating insights into the mysteries of the ancient world and captivating historical narratives. Academics disagreed about whether Confucianism belongs in the category of philosophy or religion. Naturally, there isn't a single term or designation that applies to Confucianism. It is referred to as a political ideology by some academics, a social ethic by others, and a philosophy or religion by still others. As we can see, Confucianism may be viewed as a comprehensive method of thinking and doing that includes a strong religious commitment to humankind and veneration for one's ancestors. Despite not being organized as a religion, Confucianism has a great deal of impact across East Asia since Chinese literature culture has spread it. Its influence penetrates political and spiritual spheres in addition to philosophical discourse. As a result of Confucianism's dissemination, its ideals were able to influence East Asian nations' family structures, political systems, and social mores. East Asian societies are profoundly woven with the principles and practices of Confucianism. This effect can be seen in many facets of life, including the moral standards that direct interpersonal interactions and the guiding principles of public policy. Confucian principles have influenced cultural practices and shaped expectations and standards in society. It's important to understand that, despite the widespread impact of Confucianism, traditional Chinese life and culture cannot be fully classified as Confucian. Although they offer a strong basis, Confucian ideals coexist alongside various intellectual, religious, and cultural traditions, adding to the rich diversity of East Asian nations. The ethical principles of Confucianism have lasted for more than two millennia, providing inspiration and direction for interpersonal relationships. These principles act as a moral compass, assisting people, groups, and countries in navigating intricate social dynamics and promoting peace. The idea that people are good in their core lies at the heart of Confucius's philosophy. Confucius also holds that moral goodness, guilt, and sympathy are universal human emotions. Moreover, Confucius holds that a person's nature includes justice, humanity, and wisdom. But according to Confucius, outside forces have the power to corrupt people. Confucius established education and self-cultivation as the means by which people can triumph over evil because of this. According to Confucius, Ren, or humanity, is the means through which the method is to be cultivated, and the way itself is to be cultivated through the person. All persons are equal at birth because they all possess the seeds of kindness. Therefore, it becomes necessary for each individual to nurture and grow the good that is in them to a greater and greater degree. Therefore, according to Confucius, qualities are cultivated and assimilated into a person's identity through education. The analytics tell us that the attainment of Junzi, or the state of being a perfect gentleman or superior man, is the ultimate aim of Confucius's philosophy. And according to Confucius, having Ren and Yi is just one of the qualities that makes someone a Junzi. Ren was essential to Confucian philosophy. Indeed, among all the Confucian virtues, Ren was considered by Confucius and his adherents to be the most crucial characteristic of a moral individual. Ren can be thought of as a combination of ideas like kindness, compassion, and love for others. Ren's main meaning is humanity in the broadest sense, which refers to an individual's inherent kindness of heart as demonstrated in relationships with other people. According to Confucius, having Ren makes one capable of loving and being nice to others. Being completely human, then, is what makes Ren who he is. Confucius actually believed that human beings are really only different from animals in their hearts and minds, not in their bodies. The ability to empathize or experience another person's pain is a key characteristic of the heart and mind. 
Yi is characterized as justice and righteousness. It stands for morality. According to Confucius, a genuine gentleman must possess righteousness. Confucius stated in the Analytics, a superior man does not make decisions for or against anything. He will do the right thing. Confucius said, the superior man understands righteousness. The petty man understands profits. Yi is something a good man cherishes and considers significant since it is a fundamental human virtue. However, the urge to be morally upright frequently clashes with other ideals, including wealth, power, or influence. Confucius, however, believed that moral concerns should always take precedence over conflicting values, and that inner cravings should be controlled by the cultivation of the virtues that constitute moral character. Only then will ethical behavior follow. According to Confucius, when observing gain, the superior man strives for righteousness, character development, learning from Confucianism, and helping others. Confucius's main focus is on character development, as it is understood ethically. According to Judith Burling, cultivating conscience and character is the inner face of Confucianism, while obedience and submission to authority are its exterior aspects. Confucius, as we can see, placed a high importance on education and held that people differ from one another by practice and education. In the Analytics, Confucius said, by nature, men are alike. Men get far from one another by habit. According to him, the fundamental question of whether and how people maintain their hearts, minds, and character is what determines whether or not the roots of humanity can grow into the great tree. Confucius stressed the need of developing moral virtues in one's heart and mind, but he also underlined that developing one's character also required developing virtues in other people. Confucius said, Now the man of perfect virtue, wishing to be establishing himself, seeks also to establish others. Wishing to be enlarging himself, he seeks also to enlarge others. Thus, the distinction between a person who is morally superior and one who is morally deficient is that the former has recognized what is moral in themselves and has extended it to others, whilst the latter is solely focused on advancing their own interests. However, it is important to recognize that self-cultivation, in the Confucian sense, is much more than just an introspective quest for moral awareness. Rather, it entails expanding empathy for other individuals. According to the Confucians, therefore, the self changes as it comes into contact with other selves. Therefore, the entire Confucian learning process focuses on developing one's wisdom to be respectful of others as well as enhancing oneself. Confucianism, in contrast to many Western cultural traditions, views the individual as immersed in a network of relationships, rather than viewing them as separate entities. These ties help define the person and shape their ethical character as they go from family life to increasingly complex social relationships outside of it. Therefore, a broadening of the perspective on relationships and the moral ties that bind people together constitutes human growth. It's also crucial to remember that the Confucian approach to character development places a strong focus on the pursuit of social responsibility and inner strength. For Confucians, education has two purposes. The first is to develop one's moral character. This goal is to embody the concept of a Junzi, a gentleman, or an exceptional individual. It is then feasible for the gentleman to put what he has learned into practice after he has developed virtues and improved his character. Serving the people and the state is, in fact, seen in Confucianism as the ultimate goal of education and the moral duty of a true gentleman. That's all for this video. We will be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. To keep exploring ancient history together, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time.